The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'll say good morning to those of you who are joining us on the West Coast, and good afternoon to those of you who are on the East. Um, I am in Berkeley, and it's fantastic and beautiful and sunny here. And then Phil um, is in New York, so we've got kind of the coastal situation thing happening. Um, so I just want to thank you for showing up and being on time and lending your time for this morning's webinar, the five simple steps to profit with Google AdWords. My name is Molly. I'm the marketing director for the Event Planners Association. And Phil is actually going to be taking you through this really awesome webinar this morning. And he's the COO of Main Street ROI. So what he does is he leads the company's operations and he's the primary creator of all of the training programs, um, including the one that you're going to listen to today. So he's an expert in online advertising, in marketing analytics, and in sales funnel optimization, and uh, which is awesome because his marketing thought leadership has been published on Forbes.com, Inc.com, MSN.com, a bunch of other major business media outlets. So you're learning from one of the best out there. Um, and when he's not working, he enjoys running barefoot. Um, and he's a member of the determination running team. So he raises money for the American Cancer Society by running road races in the five boroughs of New York. And he's got a wife named Erin, a daughter named Violet, and a son named Emmett. And they all live in Manhattan. And maybe one day, all of them will go running barefoot through New York City together. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I think technically they already have. That's okay, right. Perfect. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll turn it over to you, Phil, to um, to kick it off and and give everyone um, a sort of a speed level um, graduate degree education <laughs> in profiting from Google AdWords. All right, perfect. Thanks, Molly. And thanks to everyone at the uh, Event Planners Association for organizing this. So as Molly said, we're going to be talking about the five simple steps to profit with Google AdWords. And hopefully you can see my screen. I did just uh, switch slides. So if you didn't see that, let me know. Uh, some housekeeping. Uh, there's a questions box in uh, your GoToWebinar kind of widget thingy in the upper right-hand corner. Just type in some questions as I go, and I'll address those as they come in, if they're relevant to that slide, or I'll address them in the live Q&A. I always recommend you turn off distractions. Uh, you just get a lot more out of this presentation if you're not also checking email and scrolling through Facebook. And I have a quick poll just to see who's on today. And by poll, I mean uh, there's three painless questions here. Uh, first one's, are you currently advertising with Google AdWords? I will obviously be talking about the five steps to profit with Google AdWords. Uh, good to know if you're already advertising or uh, about to get started. Looks like uh, the split is 30% yes, 70% no. Let me close that out. Next question here is just the uh, size of your campaign. So what's your current or anticipated monthly ad budget? And you'll see some options there, less than 1,000, 1,000 to 5,000, all the way up to over 50,000. <clears> uh, looks like most people have voted here and the vast majority, 100% actually are uh, less than uh, 5,000. So let me close that out. That's what I would be, uh, that's what I would expect. And the last question here, are you managing your ads in-house or with an agency? With the last uh, answer being that you are actually an agency or a consultant. A lot of times when we do these trainings, we have a lot of agencies and consultants on the line. But it looks like 90% here managing the ads in-house. Uh, we do have a, a few agencies and consultants on the line. Uh, so it's about 80% in-house. 10% agency, 10% uh, uh, are an agency, 10% are using an agency. So let right, me close that out. And we will dive right in here. Here's what we'll cover today. First, I'll talk about why I recommend Google AdWords, why it uh, 
is such a good option for a lot of small businesses. Uh, why, unfortunately, businesses lose money with Google AdWords. And this is a, a common complaint I hear. People just uh, write it off. They say Google AdWords does not work. Um, and that's because of the uh, mistakes I'm going to walk through. Then I'll walk through how to do it right, the five steps. And I do have a, a special offer at the end for all of the attendees today. So Molly already gave a nice intro. I'll be quick here. This is your first presentation. You're probably wondering, who am I? Why should you listen to me? Again, my name is Phil Frost. I'm the founder of Main Street ROI. And our business provides digital marketing services like Google AdWords, uh, setup and management. Uh, we also manage ads in Bing ads and Facebook ads. And we also provide SEO services and email marketing services. Uh, so that's the services side of our business. We also provide training, like Molly mentioned. Uh, we provide a lot of free training. Uh, we have a, a, a free email newsletter. We do a lot of free webinars like this. And we also go more in depth with some of our paid trainings and master classes. <clears throat> and to date, we've helped over 2,000 businesses with their digital marketing. And Molly already mentioned uh, my thought leadership has been featured in Forbes Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. And this is my favorite slide for the day. Uh, we've got uh, Violet on the left. She's now over four years old. And then my beautiful wife, Erin, in the middle. My chubby son, Emmett, on the right. This was taken on Emmett's second birthday, which was uh, early April. Uh, his birthday was April 2nd. I think this might have been April 3rd, somewhere around there. Uh, this was taken at the, the Beer Garden on the upper west side of Manhattan. All right, why does AdWords work so well? And before I get to that, I did see a question from Greg. Will we receive the slideshow later? Yes, we are recording. And uh, we typically send out the replay of the recording as well as the slides within about 24 hours. <clears throat> so first and foremost, Google AdWords is very highly targeted advertising. Um, specifically, I'm talking about uh, Google search advertising. And that's when someone is going to Google, doing a search, for example, searching for an event planning company. They are uh, obviously looking for an event planning company uh, and they're probably looking to hire one, and you have the opportunity to get an ad to show on the first page of Google right at the top, um, and, and that's showing to someone who is basically ready to buy. They have buying intent, so it's highly targeted from the sense of uh, <clears throat> they are looking for your product or service, but uh, more importantly, it, it's highly targeted in that uh, they're they're further along in the buying uh, cycle. So if you think about that sales funnel, they're much further down the funnel um, as long as you're targeting the right keywords. Now, the second reason it works so well is that it's fully measurable. Uh, and that does come with a caveat that uh, you do need to have uh, conversion tracking installed properly, and we'll talk about that later. But if you do set it up correctly, you can measure everything from how many times your ad was displayed, how many people clicked on your ad, and then how many people uh, called your business or completed a form on your site. And if you get the tracking set up correctly, uh, you can even track sales that happen after they uh, um, call you or complete a form on your site. And there are no minimum uh, upfront investments with Google AdWords. So with other types of media buying or advertising, you might have to uh, invest thousands, multiple thousands of dollars to uh, get the, the ads running. Uh, that's just the way a lot of traditional media buying works. But with Google AdWords, there's no uh, minimum fee. You can actually start with a very low uh, daily budget, uh, you know, any, even as low as $5 a day. Um, so from that perspective, it's much much less risky. Uh, you're not throwing out a, a ton of money uh, uh, right up front. 
Plus, when you think about it, uh, you're only paying per click, uh, at least when we talk about uh, Google search network ads. So when people, again, are searching in Google, they click on your ad, that's when you pay. If uh, people, let's say a thousand people saw your ad, but nobody clicked on it, you actually would not pay any money to Google for that advertising. So you're only paying for clicks. So effectively, you're really paying per, uh, for performance on the ads uh, versus some other types of media buying where you might be paying uh, on CPM basis. So that's a thousand impressions. Uh, in, in that case, you're paying every time people see your ad, regardless of whether or not they actually click and take an action. So that's uh, it's much less risky from the standpoint of you're only paying when someone actually clicks and is interested in what you have to offer. Now, with that said, I did mention a lot of businesses do lose money, and it really comes down to planning. Uh, uh, a lot of businesses don't do the necessary upfront planning work. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> there, a lot of businesses don't get the targeting right. Uh, I talked about the fact that you need to be targeting the right keywords. Uh, with Google, it uh, goes beyond just keywords. You get, in, you get into uh, geographical targeting, demographic targeting, as well as device targeting, time of day targeting, uh, day of the week targeting. There's lots of uh, ways to slice and dice targeting. You need to make sure that's all set up properly. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, not measuring ROI, so not having the, the tracking set up to actually measure and improve your campaigns. And last but not least, uh, businesses lose money when they're not using a congruent message. And by that, uh, this is really critical when you set up your campaigns. I mentioned you can target people uh, literally searching for your product or service, so they can be searching event planning company. Well, if someone's searching for that, you obviously want to have an ad that talks about how you have an event planning company. And then you want to send them to a page on your site that talks uh, explicitly about your event planning company. And uh, if someone is searching for uh, a specific type of event, uh, like wedding planning, uh, then you'd want to have an ad that talks about your wedding planning services and a landing page that talks about your wedding plans, planning services. So a lot of businesses get that. They make that mistake of using a, uh, a generic message for a very specific search. So that, that's what I mean by having a congruent message. If someone is searching for, let's say, wedding planning, you, uh, you don't want to make the mistake and just say that you have an event planning company. They're not looking for necessarily event planning, they're looking specifically for wedding planning. So you want to make sure you have that congruent message from keyword to ad to landing page. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the five steps. <clears throat> so the first step is planning. I mentioned this earlier, that's a big mistake. And the, the, the first thing you need to do is know the, the numbers. So what numbers am I talking about? Uh, it's basically how much can you afford to pay per click to generate a new customer or client. Now, to answer that question, you want to first think about what is your profit per customer or profit per co per client, and uh, each business is going to be different there. Uh, and that also might be different per service. Uh, so I talked about wedding planning. You might have a different profit per customer. Uh, versus uh, maybe birthday planning or corporate event planning. There might be uh, uh, more profitable service lines. Next, you need to think through, you know, what's your target ad profit margin? So what are you comfortable spending to get a new customer for that particular service? <clears throat> Next question you want to answer or be able to answer how many website visitors are actually going to turn into customers. So that's your uh, website conversion rate. Uh, how many phone calls convert to sales? You might already have that historical data in terms of how many people call you each month and how many of those calls turn into sales. So that's your phone call conversion rate. And uh, how many 
phone calls are you going to get per website visitor? So if you get a thousand visitors to your website, uh, is that 10 phone calls, 20, 50, whatever that number is? Uh, that would again be based on historical data. <clears throat> and if you don't have that, you want to be able to set up the tracking to be able to calculate that. So here's some numbers in action. If you do know uh, what your uh, what your numbers are, here's an example. Let's say you have, uh, for a particular service, you're making $300 profit per customer or client, and you're comfortable with a 25% profit margin, and you know that 15% uh, of the phone calls that you get actually turn into customers. 15% uh, phone call conversion rate. And uh, <clears throat> let's say you know that you get uh, about 8% of the visitors to your website to actually pick up the phone and call. Now you can use this formula to calculate your maximum cost per click. So again, you're only going to pay in Google AdWords when someone clicks on your ad. <clears throat> when someone clicks on your ad, they're going to be a, become a visitor on your site. So you're basically figuring out how much can you afford to pay to get someone to visit your website. And that you, you can calculate, calculate that based on these numbers. And this is assuming that your sales are coming from phone calls. So if you are getting sales from uh, people, let's say scheduling appointments from a, uh, uh, a web form, then the uh, the numbers are definitely going to be different, and you would need to use web form conversion rates rather than phone call conversion rates. But uh, the goal here is just to figure out, get a ballpark number for what's the maximum you can pay to get someone to your website. And in this example, the maximum you could pay is two dollars and seventy cents. So when you later on, we'll talk about uh, doing keyword research. Now you have a number in mind as far as, uh, you know, if you find a lot of keywords that are, let's say, $10, $20 per click, those uh, are going to be uh, too expensive for you. Uh, and if you find keywords that are, you know, $2, maybe a dollar fifty, you know, and, and you're pretty confident you can afford to pay that kind of uh, uh, cost per click. <clears throat> so that's that's the planning step and just getting a feel for the metrics in your business to, to basically do a sanity check and make sure you're not setting yourself up for failure. Now, in certain cases, in certain businesses, you might not have enough profit per customer to be able to afford to even advertise. And if you see other businesses advertising and you do the keyword research and you know they're paying five dollars maybe ten dollars per click and you're wondering how the heck can they afford to do that well the answer is either they're losing money but if you see they're doing it you know month after month that's probably not the case then the real answer is that they probably have a higher customer value and a higher profit per customer or profit per client than you do and you would need to work on that area of your business to be able to make Google AdWords work for you. So step two, I'm going to assume at this point the numbers do make sense, and uh, next it's all about choosing the right keywords. There's really three criteria. You want to make sure first the keyword is actually being searched in Google. That should be obvious. You want to make sure that that keyword is searched by your particular prospects, your ideal customers. And uh, most importantly is this third criteria. You want to make sure the keyword is being searched bef when they're making a buying decision. So that's what I call buying intent. And I mentioned this before, if someone's searching for an event planning company, they are uh, most likely looking to hire an event planning company. Similarly, if they're searching wedding planning company, you know, you're not generally just fooling around doing research about wedding planning companies unless you're actually in the market to hire one. So let's do uh, let's do an example here so you know what I mean. So the two uh, keywords here, 
related to event planning. First, a very uh, uh, broad keyword, event planning, versus the example I've been using, event planning company. And when you look in uh, Google's Keyword Planner tool, and this is a free tool in Google AdWords that will, uh, you, you just type in these keywords into that tool, and the Keyword Planner will tell you how many times that keyword is searched every month. And I looked at, I think I just targeted uh, all of the United States and the keyword event planning is searched 12,100 times every month. And then, in, <clears throat> excuse me, event planning company is searched 320 times per month. And the question here is which keyword will drive more sales? So which keyword would you think you'd wanna focus on with a Google AdWords campaign. And let's just go through the criteria. We've got, is it searched in Google? We already know that because uh, I gave you the, the number of times they're searched every month. So it passes that test. Are they searched by your prospects? I think both of them pass that test. Uh, someone searching event planning uh, could likely be interested in uh, an event planning company. But really it's this third criteria where event planning in my mind doesn't really pass that test. Someone just searching event planning um, uh, could be you know, doing research into that industry. It could actually be um, someone interested in starting an event planning company uh, rather than actually looking for and looking to hire an event planning company. So that's, in my mind, I kind of gave away this answer earlier, it's, it's too broad of a search, event planning. You know, it sounds super relevant, but uh, another way to look at it is how could that keyword go wrong, or uh, is it likely there are people searching that that are not my ideal client or customer? And the answer there is yes with event planning. I already mentioned that could actually be people in the industry doing those searches versus uh, someone searching event planning company. There's much more buying intent there, and it's a little bit more targeted, and uh, you have much uh, higher chances of attracting people looking to hire an event planning company. All right, so that's, that's keyword research. And again, I recommend using Google's Keyword Planner tool. It's a free tool within Google AdWords. So now we've got the list of, of keywords that are relevant and ideally that they all have buying intent and now we need to write compelling ads. And before we get into how to write compelling ads, I want to explain a, a very critical aspect of Google AdWords. If you write really good ads, you'll get both more traffic to your site because more people will click on your ad versus the competitors, but you'll also pay less for that traffic. And that's, uh, that's related to Google AdWords. Uh, they have a quality score. So uh, this, is, this is how it works. Google actually will give a discount and higher ad position to advertisers with a higher click-through rate. And a click-through rate is calculated by how many times the ad is clicked on divided by how many times Google actually displayed that ad, which is called an impression. So high click-through rates lead to uh, uh, obviously more traffic because people are clicking. Uh, you'll actually get a better ad position and a discount on those ads. And here's how it works from Google's perspective. Uh, here's two examples. We've got uh, example A where it's a dollar cost per click. So that means the advertiser is paying, paying $1 for the, each click. And I'm saying that that advertiser has a 5% click-through rate. So if it's displayed 100 times, five people will click on that ad. Well, if that's the case, then Google is making five cents every time Google displays that ad. And that's how Google makes money. So they're making money when they display the ad. They know they're making five cents every time they display that ad. Now, advertiser B is paying $3 per click. So they're willing to pay 
three times as much money, but their ad is only getting clicked on 1% of the time. And again, Google only makes money when people click on the ads. So in that case, Google's only making three cents when they display that advertiser's ad. So when you think about it from Google's perspective, it's pretty obvious why they do what they do. They obviously want to show advertiser A more than advertiser B because they're going to make more money. They're making two cents more every time they show advertiser A, even though advertiser A is paying less. They're only paying a dollar per click. So what Google does, uh, it's it's pretty uh, it look it's simple in terms of math, but it's pretty genius what they do here. They uh, they reward advertisers that write really good ads that get a, a high click through rate relative to the competition. And that's a critical point because I get this question all the time. You know, what's a good click through rate? It really doesn't matter what an average good click through rate is. All that matters is that you have a better click through rate than the competitors that are advertising on that keyword. Because at the end of the day, Google just wants to make the most money that they possibly can. <clears throat> and ultimately, this is what I call a win-win-win. Uh, for advertisers like you and me, we can get uh, better ad positions, so we can actually rank number one and pay less than all the other uh, competitors and get more traffic. So it's obviously a win for advertisers. It's a win for Google. I already mentioned they are making more money with this formula. And then it's also a win for the people searching because when you think about it, why are people clicking more on advertiser A there with a, that has a 5% click-through rate versus advertiser B has 1%? Well, it must be because more people are finding what they're looking for in advertiser A. So it's just a more compelling ad. It's matching what they want to actually find in the search results. So it's really a, a win for the people searching too. More people are finding what they want. <clears throat> so it's a really important point that hopefully uh, explains why you need to focus on writing really compelling ads. There's three factors to great ads. Uh, the first concept is benefits versus features. It's kind of marketing 101. You want to really dig into what are the benefits of working with your business versus working with any of the other businesses. So don't just rattle rattle off uh, the same old features that you know every business is talking about. Really dig in. You know what is it that uh, you do that makes the, the the customer's life better and easier. So you're answering the question, what's in it for me? That's really what the your customers are asking, or prospective customers. They're asking, you know, what's in it for me? Why should I actually hire you? Next is having some kind of strong offer. And I, in my experience, a lot of businesses drop the ball here. They think they can just say that they do, you know, event planning, and that's that's totally all that's it's going to take. But the reality is when you do some of these searches, you'll find other businesses making offers. They're, you know, they're saying uh, uh, a free initial consultation or even, you know, some kind of uh, uh, bonus gift when they sign up, whatever that is, you, uh, you do want to have a stronger offer than the competitors who are advertising. And again, this is it's all relative. <clears throat> and finally, you want to have some kind of call to action. And with uh, with your business, it might be to call, it might be to schedule an appointment, uh, come into the office, whatever it is, you want to make sure you have a clear call to action in your ads. And here's a, uh, a search I did recently. I think I did this a couple days ago. I just searched for corporate event planning companies, NYC. And you can see, excuse me, some some pretty good ads here. Uh, at least, definitely from a, a relevant standpoint. So I searched corporate event planning. First two ads at the top of the page lead with corporate event planning. That's a very congruent message. That's clearly what uh, the person searching is looking for. So we've got a high, two highly relevant ads, <clears throat> and then we get into 
uh, uh, benefits here. So the second ad, personalized unique events. So the benefit there of having a, a personalized event uh, and it being unique, which may or may not be important to your prospective customers. Uh, I do want to call out a couple um, uh, features of these ads. So at the top, um, you have two headlines, so corporate event planning, and then that's the first headline, dash, full service event production is the second headline. And then um, you've got the URL in green, and then we have what's called a call extension. We've got the 800 number here, so people can actually call straight from the ad. And then the line under that, producing technology-driven corporate events in New York City for over 37 years. <clears throat> I would um, I would not give high grades on that particular line, but that is the ad description. Uh, I don't think most people find technology-driven corporate events to be a benefit statement. So I would actually uh, recommend improving that line there. That's the description. Then you can see some bullet points underneath. I give uh, good grades there for highlighting uh, some of the benefits of, and, uh, and credibility indicators. Those are called uh, call-out extensions. That's another feature in Google AdWords that I highly recommend you use in your ads. And the, uh, the next line, services, um, that's another feature where you can list the different services that you provide. And these are, these are ad extensions that make your ads much larger and will increase the click-through rate, which in turn, again, will improve your quality score and lead to lower co costs and uh, better ad placement. And last but not least, you can see some links under here. They say, our services, contact us, testimonials, our work. Those are uh, site link extensions. And uh, you can see how that first ad uh, is taking up a lot of real estate because they're using a lot of the ad extensions and AdWords. So I highly recommend that. Okay, step four is creating a high converting landing page. So after they click on the ad, they're going to, quote, land on your website. And that page that they land on is called a landing page. So that's the, the web page right after the ad is clicked. The number one goal here of your landing page is to get your prospect to take action. And by far, the, the biggest mistake I see businesses doing over and over again is using their home page. So this relates to that mistake about having a congruent message. So uh, in the example I just was showing you, it was about uh, corporate event planning. The biggest mistake you can make is take, having that ad, which was pretty good, it, you know, from a, a copywriting standpoint, I, I, you know, it was at least congruent. When someone clicks on that ad, the biggest mistake you can make is sending them to your homepage that then basically hits the reset button. You've got someone searching corporate event planning, they click, click an ad that talks about your corporate event planning, and then you send them to your homepage that now starts talking about everything that you do not just corporate event planning, you also do wedding planning, uh, birthday parties, et cetera. Now you've hit the reset button, that prospect has to now navigate and figure out how to get back to what they're looking for, which is corporate event planning. So don't make that mistake. Send them to the page on your site that specifically talks about what it is that you're advertising in the ad. So that's the final point, just how congruence is really the key to success. Um, can't emphasize this enough. You wanna match the keyword intent and match that in the ad copy, and then you wanna match that on the landing page. <clears throat> and you can use this slide here as a checklist. So these are the, the six must-have elements on a landing page. You wanna have a strong headline, and that headline should match, again, the ad and it should match the keyword that was searched. So going back to the ad example, I searched for corporate event planning and the ad said corporate event planning. You wanna make sure the 
headline talks about corporate event planning. So that's the headline. Then you want to have relevant benefit focused copy. It's uh, again, marketing 101, focus on the benefits, what's in it for me. You want to have lots of social proof. And this is uh, a critical factor with online marketing because people are just so skeptical when they're surfing around online. I know personally, I'm extremely skeptical. If I click on an ad and then I, you know, I, I see this business, it, it looks good. I want to see some kind of proof that it is in fact a real business. So having testimonials is one indicator. Uh, the next factor here is credibility indicators. And by that, I mean, um, if you've been men mentioned in press, having press logos is a credibility indicator. If you're a member of the Better Business Bureau and you have an A-plus rating, you would definitely want to highlight that on the landing page. If you're a member of some kind of uh, association in your industry, if you have certifications in your industry, you want to make sure you highlight all of that. Next is some kind of risk reversal. Again, people are very uh, skeptical and, and have a lot of fear online. So if you can remove the risk by having some uh, uh, guarantee with doing business with you, that can definitely help. And finally, you want to have a strong call to action. So don't take it for granted that people will figure out what they need to do. You want to be very explicit on your landing page with the next step. So if they are searching for corporate event planning, they land on your page, what should they actually do as the next step? Again, that might be to schedule an appointment, it might be to uh, place a phone call, or maybe um, you complete a form and you'll call them. You know, whatever your sales process is, make that very apparent and, uh, and clearly tell the, uh, the prospect what they need to do on that page. All right, step five, I highlighted this earlier as a, as a big mistake. You need to set up conversion tracking. And there are three ways to track conversions. The most straightforward way to do it is to track your web forms, and that works great. It works perfectly well for e-commerce businesses. And I know not a, lot of, uh, a, lot, a lot of folks on the line are not pure e-commerce businesses. Um, but if, you, if all of your transactions are online, then really all you need is web form conversion tracking. So that tracks uh, any type of web form. When you submit the form, it will uh, track as a conversion, and you'll see how many conversions, how many of those web form com conversions you get from your Google AdWords campaign. Now, if you get phone calls from your campaigns, then you also need phone call tracking. In a lot of cases, uh, a lot of businesses get more phone calls than they do web form tracking, in which case phone call tracking is the most important tracking. And you want to be able to track how many of those phone calls came from the Google AdWords campaign. And next, if you have an offline sales component, so if people are calling your business or even submitting a form, and then you're, you're maybe creating a proposal for them, and then uh, the sale doesn't happen until uh, maybe a day or a week or a month later, you would need some way to track that that sale originally came from Google AdWords. And the best way to do that is to use CRM tracking. Uh, CRM is a, a customer relationship management tool. Uh, popular CRMs are Salesforce, uh, Act, and we use, in our business, Infusionsoft. There are lots of different CRMs out there. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Ultimately, it comes down to storing the source of the contact. And in this case, we want to say that uh, contact, let's say John in your system came from Google AdWords. And that could be as simple as tracking the phone calls that come from the Google AdWords campaign and just manually in your CRM uh, saying that John is a new prospect and he came in from a Google AdWords ad. And then that deal might not actually close for let's say a month later. And then you can look in your CRM and, and run a report for all of the sales that came, came in originally from Google AdWords. And now you've got your, 
uh, your actual dollars in there as far as you know you know you made uh, X dollars that month from the Google AdWords campaign and that's how you can actually calculate return on investment So just digging a little bit deeper into each of these web form tracking, that's tracking your contact form, could be requesting a demo, scheduling an appointment. The way it works is you install the Google AdWords conversion code on the thank you page of the web form. So when someone submits the form, they should get redirected to a thank you page that says thanks for scheduling an appointment with us, we'll be in touch shortly. That page has the conversion code and the con as long as the conversion code is on that page, it will get the data gets sent to uh, Google AdWords automatically. And then you'll be able to report on uh, stats like cost per lead. So everyone that completes that form on your site, you'd consider them a lead and you can get a cost per lead. And then you might know that, uh, you know, if you're paying $10 per lead or $100 per lead, then that is um, okay and it's profitable for you. And now you've got a number that you can use to optimize your AdWords campaigns. Digging a little bit deeper into phone call tracking, I recommend you, uh, you use AdWords call conversion tracking. And this is free to use and free to set up. <clears throat> you can track the phone calls from the number listed in the ad. If you remember the first advertiser in my example was using a call extension. So there was a phone number listed there. You can track all of the calls to that number. You can also track calls uh, placed on your website. <clears throat> so the way that works, when you install this correctly, Google AdWords will, will dynamically change the phone number on your site for basically every visitor from Google AdWords ads, they'll get a different phone number, and then that phone number will forward to your, your correct phone number, so like your main business line. And the, way they, the reason they do that is so that Google AdWords can track how many of those phone calls are generated from the AdWords campaign. And fairly recently, Google introduced what's called the AdWords call import and this is important for tracking sales that come in from phone calls. So let's say you get a phone call today. It's uh, 12.44 p.m. Eastern time. <clears throat> you would need to know the caller's phone number. And let's say again <coughs> that it's John calling, and you know that he's using the phone number that you have designated for Google AdWords. So in your CRM, you would documented that it was a Google AdWords lead. Um, you put in his uh, phone number from caller ID and then also document the length of that phone call. So it might be a five minute phone call. As long as you have that data, you can import that into Google AdWords and uh, Google AdWords will match that to the actual uh, ad that was clicked on before placing that phone call. That's pretty cool that Google AdWords can do that now, uh, but it does require a human to actually document that data. And then uh, once, let's say on a monthly basis, run a report for all the sales from Google AdWords and then import that data back into Google AdWords. So the reason you'd wanna go through that effort, which might not be clear for everyone, let me clarify that. You wanna go through that effort because if you import all of your sales with revenue data, you can run return on investment reports right in Google AdWords and actually see you know, how profitable each keyword is or how, which ads are more profitable. And that's how you can really optimize a campaign and squeeze as much uh, profitability out of your marketing dollars. And the last tracking here, CRM tracking. So again, that's customer relationship management couple examples there. You can even just use Excel, an Excel uh, spreadsheet or a Google spreadsheet and just make sure you're documenting all the information. <clears throat> and you, really the goal here is to document the source of the lead, in this case Google AdWords. As long as you have that source of the lead and then the uh, 
the date um, that that person uh, uh, contacted you. Um, and, and sorry, if you want to do an offline import, this is another uh, cool feature of Google AdWords. You would need to get uh, what's called the GCL ID, and this would be if someone completes a form on your site, your web developer can actually edit the forms to submit what's called the GCL ID, and that's a unique identifier for all of the clicks on your ads. And if you get that into your CRM, and then again run re sales reports on a monthly basis, and then import those GCL IDs into Google AdWords, AdWords will match those to the keywords that were searched and the ads that were clicked on. And again, you can run those return on investment reports and see exactly which keywords and ads are really driving sales. So before we get to the, the Q&A, let's do a quick recap here. Know your numbers. We talked about calculating your max cost per click, then choosing the right keywords, getting your targeting right, then writing compelling ads. Uh, looks like my check marks are out of order there. <laughs> Setting up uh, conversion tracking creating and creating a high converting landing page. I got a little out of order there. And before we get to Q&A, special offer. As I mentioned, we do uh, we do a lot of paid uh, trainings, and the special offer here is a bundle of three trainings: how to set up a profitable Google AdWords campaign that's sold on our site. You can actually go to MainStreetROI.com/training, and you'll see we sell these courses for ninety-seven dollars. <throat> Next one is how to optimize a Google AdWords campaign. So, getting it set up correctly is the first training, and then on an ongoing basis, how to optimize and improve. And the third training here is an introduction to Google Analytics and how to use that properly. Total value of those courses is $291, and you can get everything for only $97 by going to MainStreetROI.com forward slash AdWords bundle. And that should be on the next slide here for live Q&A. You can see in the upper left-hand corner is the URL for the AdWords bundle. And then uh, in the upper right-hand corner is a uh, request to please complete a brief survey after the webinar. There's only uh, four or five questions, and it should only take you a couple minutes. All right, I do see a question from Greg. <clears throat> uh, Greg asks, should you get so granular as to track which ads lead to which prospects in your CRM? So the, the short answer is yes, you can, and um, that that can definitely help you make better, better decisions. Uh, the longer answer is that it depends because uh, with everything, it's, it's kind of, you gotta weigh the, the pros and cons. So the cons are it's a lot of work to start tracking you know, every single different ad in your account, making sure that's working properly, <clears throat> sending data into your CRM, and then it's a lot of work then to run those reports and actually interpret it and figure out you know, what's, what's working, what's not. That can be worth it if uh, first you wanna make sure you have enough volume of sales. So if you're only doing you know, a handful of sales uh, each month, then uh, getting that granular is not really going to help you because you're not, you're most likely not going to have significant data for probably a year or two. So that would be one factor. But if you're doing hundreds to thousands of sales a month, uh, then getting that data could be useful and you get some significant sample sizes relatively quickly that you can then use to optimize your campaign. So that was, that's the only question I see. Oh, here's another one from Jeffrey. Uh, would you change up your ad verbiage every so often and or change, add or subtract the keywords you are paying for? <laughs> so that, that's a great question. Gets into you know, how to optimize your campaign at a minimum, I recommend everyone set up their advertising and their ad groups 
with a minimum of two ads in each ad group. And just stepping back for a minute in terms of the organization of an AdWords campaign, you create ad groups and you put similar keywords in those ad groups. And uh, a very simple, simplistic example here would be to have an ad group with wedding planning keywords in it, and then have another ad group with corporate uh, event planning keywords in it. So now you've got uh, very similar keywords in each ad group, and then each ad group will have their own ads. So you have your corporate event planning ads within the, the ad group that has the corporate event planning keywords. And then uh, if you remember, you want to have those ads going to a corporate event planning landing page. So that's that's the basic structure. <clears throat> and uh, you could have you know, uh, dozens to even hundreds of different ad groups in the account. And each one of those ad groups should have at least two ads that you're what's called split testing. And that gets into, again, optimization, um, uh, and, and split testing, which is to test two different versions and have 50% of the prospects see uh, ad A and the other 50% will see ad B. And then you want to measure the click-through rate of each of those ads and the conversion rate of each of those ads and basically make a decision based on the click-through rate and the conversion rate on which ad is better and then that is your new control ad, and you pause the, the poor performing ad, and now you create another version to test, and then if you keep doing that, as you can imagine, you keep continually improve your click-through rate and your conversion rate over time. So you, uh, as far as changing up your ad verbiage every so often, the short answer is you don't just do that on a whim, and uh, you, you don't really set a schedule and say every week I'm going to change the ad copy. What you do is you split test two different versions, and then once you are able to make a decision that one's better than the other, or maybe they're both the same, then you pause that test and you start a new test with uh, uh, your control ad and a test ad. And then as far as the keywords, <clears throat> you want to on a frequent basis, be looking at the keywords that you're advertising on and look at how they are actually converting. So if you go, let's say you get 200 clicks on a particular keyword and it does not convert at all, and let's say the cost per click was $2, so you just spent $400 on a keyword and it didn't drive any phone calls or any uh, uh, scheduled appointments via the web form, that's a pretty good sample size at 200 to know, hey, that keyword is probably a loser. Um, now, you need to be a little bit careful. It might be a loser because your, your ad copy is just really bad. So you might wanna say, hey, I need to have better ad copy and test this again. Or let's say you, you had really good copy, really good landing page, uh, then you are very confident that's just a, a bad keyword for your business, then you would just pause that keyword. But um, again, you wouldn't just randomly be adding or subtracting keywords. That's why you would subtract. And then as far as adding keywords, <clears throat> there's a report in Google AdWords where you can, um, it's called a search query report, that tells you it, all of the different uh, exact phrases that people are searching that are triggering your ads you want to frequently be looking at that report and finding exact phrases that people are searching where you're getting conversions. And that's how you can add more keywords um, to your account. Uh, it, it's basically the, the best way to add because those are keywords that are already converting for you. You just weren't precisely targeting them. <clears throat> Elena asked if this will be available on podcast. We will send a replay uh, typically within about 24 hours. Uh, Jeffrey asked, and do you offer that service? So we do provide Google AdWords setup and management and optimization services. So we do everything from setting up a new account with, uh, with 
uh, so so a, a brand new advertiser getting set up and then uh, managing and optimizing the campaigns and we also provide that service for existing advertisers where we go in and uh, improve what you're already doing and then uh, improve and expand and optimize so Molly I think we are just about out of time and I think I got through all the questions I know you wanted to talk at the end if you're still there yeah I'm still here um, thanks for that Phil that was awesome I just wanted to throw it out there to anybody who's on the line that we um, sort of host and run a group on Facebook for event planners. So if you pop onto Facebook and you search event planners club um, and request to join, I'll approve your request. And in there, we've got a whole bunch of event planners who are sharing ideas about what's working for them with their marketing, what's working for them with their event design. Um, you can pop in there and ask questions and people will chime in to answer. Um, sometimes I'll do Facebook Lives where I'll do some training on how to um, use social media for your marketing, how to grow your business. So if you pop onto Facebook and you search Event Planners Club, um, that's our group, and we'd love to have you join um, and be a part of that community over there um, so we can just stay in touch and figure out ways that we can keep supporting you and helping you out with your business. Um, so... That's, yeah, that's a fun place. Event Planners Club on Facebook. Um, and that is all from me at the moment. I hope you guys will all request that um, so then we can just kind of keep the conversation going and stay in touch over there. All right, great. Well, I didn't see any more questions coming in. If, if anyone does have follow-up questions, you can always email info at MainStreetROI.com. That's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can always reply to the email that we'll send out with the uh, the replay as well. And then the final reminder will be to, uh, to please complete the brief survey. Uh, just love to get your feedback on this presentation. And then there's also a question about ideas for future training. So with that, thanks Molly. Thanks again uh, to Molly and the Event Planning Association. Thanks Phil, thanks everyone. See you next time. All right, take care. All right, bye.